it might be your right, but I don't like it. But to, to keep quiet to say, okay, that's your freedom. No, sometimes you have to say, you are insulting me. But we have to say it in a wise way, not in our emotional reactionary. No, I, I have the right to say to somebody, you are insulting. I don't like what you are saying. And in the name of my mutual respect, I don't like it. And I, I, I have the duty to tell you that I don't like it. But there is something that I will never do, which is responding to you by insulting you. This is what we have in the Quran. Don't insult what they believe in uh, uh, beside God, or, or uh, 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 which is not God or their uh, uh, beliefs. They will end up insulting God without knowledge. So you have to be in this uh, very, uh, very uh, uh, cautious about our, our attitude. So having all this in mind, how can we translate this into our communication with the world today? And this is why I think that with the, 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 the Prophet's life, the life of the Prophet, we need to have in mind these two dimensions. And then the way we deal with the, the Prophet is, as I said, to extract from his life all this intimate dimension that when you speak about them, the people will understand that. So we have to go with some of the facts, some of the, the experiences that he went through, and to translate this into human experience. That the Prophet ﷺ, he, he came, he's not an innovator, he's confirming what was in the previous tradition, even things that are so important, be careful, don't only integrate the Prophet ﷺ into the, uh, the prophets that are, have to do with the monotheistic tradition. You will see things that with Hinduism and Buddhism and even Socrates. Socrates and, and the Greek philosophy that was said in the Greek philosophy that we find in our tradition. You know why? Because we trust reason. We are not scared of rational understanding. So the intimate is that, for example, you find in the Greek tradition that it is said that before we came on earth, we had the knowledge of truth and the philosopher is trying to extract from ourselves the truth. From an Islamic perspective, we understand this, yes. Because the fitra is there, there is something that is covered. And you know what is the meaning of for kofr, by the way? Kofr is not uh, uh, disbelief. Kofr is to have your heart covered. Is, and in fact, when you come back to face, you uncover. You come back to is, is the natural state, is to come back to the fitra. So for us, when we speak about this, it's very important from an Islamic viewpoint to come to the deep understanding of what we are talking about, about our heart, about this dimension uh, of the Prophet ﷺ, and to come to the universal uh, and, and to be able to show that this is connected to the, all the human experience. When uh, Socrates is saying, I know that I know nothing, yes. When he's saying, we have to come back to the deep soul to get the truth within, yes. When Jesus is talking about love, and you know, once again, we talk so much about rules and so... Uh, 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 you know, this connection that we have to love. And, and you know, I'm coming from a family, I always heard about love and loving the Prophet Salam, loving God. And once I went to Brazil, and I went to deal with Christians loving, uh, working at the grassroots level, and they were uh, Christ, uh, 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 liberation theologians. You know, if you heard about Daniel Der Camara, who was working on the, and I came with all what I had with the Islamic teaching, and I went there and I saw Christians working on the ground, working with this, we have to love the poor, to serve the poor in the name of justice. They sent me back to my message because this is coming from the Fetra. This is exactly what you have to do with your fellow brothers and sisters in humanity. Not only, by the way, not only to be witnesses to the non-Muslims, many of you as Turkish people, you have to do it here here in this country don't be obsessed with the west be obsessed with your neighbor 
with the Turkish people here. The great majority of the Turkish people don't get the right understanding of the Prophet ﷺ and his message. And even the practicing Muslims, we all, because we are superficial in our understanding, this deep dimension which he had, which has to do with this. The, so, so how do we explain this? His quest for meaning, his quest for truth, we have to translate this. A Prophet ﷺ saying, when I was young, I was in helpful fudul, which was based about justice. If now I would have to come back to this, I would come back to this. So meaning there are universal principles. Justice is justice for all, not only for Muslims. And if a Muslim is doing something wrong, I have to stand up against him. Help your brother or your sister, right or wrong. How am I going to help my brother when he's wrong? Stop him, prevent him from doing wrong. This is the message. And if you speak like this, this... Can I say this to a non-Muslim audience? Not only I'm going to be understood, say, oh, that's exactly what we, th they didn't even think that we can think like this. Because we don't know how to translate our, uh, the deep dimension here. So when we speak about this, is in fact to come back to the deep understanding of Islam, to trans translate this to the behavior of the Prophet ﷺ and to be able to present the behavior of the Prophet ﷺ in these terms, with this dimension, the deep spiritual dimension, that at the end, the journey in our life is purify your heart. And purify your heart is try tomorrow to be better than you are today. It's a jihad. And... And please, when you speak about the Prophet ﷺ and about Islam, uh, don't avoid some terms. I'm always talking about jihad, sharia. And I will. The problem is our definition. If jihad is the way towards peace, it's how I master my tensions and how I master injustices in society to get peace because no peace and no justice, no peace. So this is the way we have to, to also come to this in the way we speak. So the spiritual dimension, but please not the spiritual dimension as, oh, spirituality is apolitical. There is no spiritual uh, or apolitical spirituality or politics without spirituality. Spirituality is all about meaning. And in fact, the only way to have a right understanding of politics is to come to it with the spiritual dimension that politics is to serve the people. It's not a question of only getting power. So I would say here that in this dim dimension, the universal, the intimate universal is so important. Then you speak, when you come to the Prophet ﷺ, you speak to his journey, about his journey. You speak about his heart. You speak about the fact, the way he was. The way he was, the way he was with nature, crying, crying until Fajr in the morning because he got a message, he got a verse, not talking about hell, fire, not talking about uh, 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 punishment, but talking, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa fi layli wa nahari la ayatin li ulil albab. He was crying. There are signs in the creation of earth and, uh, and, and heaven and the alternation of night and day. For those who are full of insight, crying. And Bilal, radiallahu anhu, saying, why are you crying? Because I got this message. And he was saying, you have to ponder over this message. Meaning what? Look at nature. But once again, it's not just to sell it, say, you know what? In Islam, we care about nature. And if we look at our life, we don't really care about nature. We don't in our education. We think that to educate our uh, kids is about halal and haram. It's a, a relationship with nature. It's a relationship with uh, animals. And also this, I'm sorry, you can speak about the Prophet as much as you want, Isa to Salam, but if we don't uh, listen to the way he is telling us to treat animals, halal meat is not only the way you kill animals, it's the way you treat them when alive. This is what the Prophet Salam was telling us, be careful with this. So this is also a message that we have. And also to be able to say, look, the best way to deal with the Prophet ﷺ is also to be able to deal with our own contradictions. Because we say that we are following the Prophet ﷺ, but it's not always the case. So to be able to say, be careful, our model is not always represented by the followers. 
and, and this critical thinking, this critical uh, take on ourselves by being far from the model, it's also important because it gives the model also a way that is protected from the shortcomings and the contradictions of Muslim. The best way to be faithful to the Prophet is not to avoid being critical with the Muslims. Because we are betraying the message very often. But not in the way that we are rejecting a constructive criticism towards the Muslims. This is what we have to do uh, with the, universe, the intimate universal. So this dimension of the heart, the way he was dealing with poor, the way also that we need to deal with this as something which is essential to, with the intimate universal, to take some of the issues of our time and to try to say what was the answer of the Prophet ﷺ about racism when he had the black, when he had the Arabs, when he had people coming from all over, and he was saying, all of us, we are all coming from dust, we are all equal. This very deep understanding in Islam that the Prophet ﷺ was not differentiating people and colors, on origins. And he was implementing, <laughs> we are all dignified being, because we are human beings, we are dignified beings, and we are all equal. But the best and the most dignified among us is the one who has the deeper God consciousness. So this is the way the Prophet ﷺ was, and this is the way we have to talk about it. And I can tell you something. All what I said today, I am saying it everywhere around the world, to Muslim and non-Muslim audiences, and they get it right. See, if this is the way... I like the way you are translating this. Because we are not translating at the periphery, come from the center, from the light, which has to do with the heart, which has to do with the mind. It's to make him a human, because he was a human. He's not the son of God. He's a human, he's our example. And this is where we have to come. And then comes the shared universal values that we are talking about. So we extract from the life of the prophet, from the chronology of his life, these shared universal values. Are we not talking about dignity? Are we not talking about justice? Are we not talking about freedom? And even, I'm sorry, the life of the prophet is Sirah, the biography of the prophet is not only a set of ahadith that we take, even, even in the book that I wrote, and no one challenged me on that, that the prophet never killed somebody because she or he changed his or her religion. It never happened. So now you can come with ahadith and say, the, the you know, hukm ridda that we have, so that's some scholars. Now we have many interpretations about this. But I said it 25 years ago, the Prophet ﷺ never killed somebody. And the only thing that we mention uh, in the, the hadith is when somebody was changing his religion to come to the Muslim community, taking some information and bringing them to the enemies. So it was war betrayers, not changing the religion. So this is another discussion because this has to do with fiqh. But the point is that when you come to the deep understanding of the Prophet ﷺ, the way he was, even when we had to do with punishment, is forgiveness. So we, as Muslims, when we come to this, the shared values is about the human dignity. It's about equality. It's about, uh, you know, the Prophet ﷺ sometimes was crying because he would have liked people to convert to Islam. And he had this experience with his own ankle. You can even not change the religion of your ankle. You love him, it's in Allah's hands. And you are asked, what do you want? Once we had somebody who studied Islam for 25 years, he was in, a, uh, in front of a professor. Uh, and he said, what do you want? Do you want to convert me? And the professor looked at him, thinking that this was, you know, he was very sincere. He said, yes. I'm sorry, I'm not talking about the Prophet ﷺ to convert you because this is none of my business. I can't do this. I just want you to know and to get the right picture. After this, it's between you, God, and your heart. It's not me. That's not me. And we know. 
ولو شاء ربك لآمن من في الأرض كلهم جميعا فأنت تكره الناس حتى يكونوا مؤمنين so if God would have willed everyone would have been a, a believer so do you have to imp- can you now impose this onto people you can't and the Prophet ﷺ never did it so when we are asked in the West are you here to convert us no we are here as witnesses of our message to the human being that's it الرحمة هي I'm trying to be a gift. I'm in the West. I'm even in Turkey to be a gift. If now the people who are looking at practicing Muslims don't see in Turkey that they are a gift, it might be that it's for the gift to rethink in which way he or she is a gift. This is the critical thinking. And then people are going to reject you. It's not because you are calling to peace that you are not going to have wars. Quite the opposite. The Prophet from the very beginning, he understood this. Know that if you are sincere with God, you will have attacks, adversity, insults. Know this. This happened. So I want also make it clear here that for every one of us, when you speak about the Prophet, he was for peace. He was for justice. He was for dignity. He was for uh, compassion and forgiveness. He was for all this. But he also had to face uh, enemies. And this is sunnatullah, that we have to deal with this. So we have to translate this in our life as Muslims also. That we have to understand this. That uh, uh, you are not going to be, uh, uh, you are, we are not going to, to try to translate this into something which is uh, 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 a message that is avoiding human realities. No, you have to deal with wars. And when the people are saying, well, you know what? Islam is a religion of peace. I said, be careful. Islam is also dealing with wars. Islam is dealing with conflicts. In the Quran, you have verses that have dealing with... So what do you mean by a religion of peace? That we are only talking about peace and we are avoiding? No, we are dealing with peace knowing the conditions of peace and justice is the first. So if we have oppressors in the name of peace, we are going to resist. So it's a message here that the Prophet ﷺ embodied in his life. He stood up and he was uh, uh, at the forefront of this. We have to be clear on this. And we have to be clear on the fact that anything that is happening with the dominant culture in the name of the Prophet ﷺ, because we are following him and we are following in the footsteps, we will never give up on justice. We will never give up on dignity. We will never give up on racism. We are never giving up on anything which has to do with the human dignity. This is the message of the Prophet ﷺ. And the people, they want us also to understand this. So, so keep, to keep on repeating that what is done by violent extremists is not Islamic, that's fine. But now what are you saying about Islam? What are you saying about the Prophet Because I, I, I don't want to trans... Because we are attacked by people saying we are violent, we end up talking about the Prophet as if nothing happened, he was not resisting. No, we are resisting and we are carrying on resistance. And by the way, this was the, the message of Jesus and he was the message and Moses. Moses resisted. All the story in, uh, uh, against Pharaoh was exactly about this. So this is why we have to be quite clear on we will never give up. This is the message of the Prophet ﷺ. It has to do with dignity and courage. So this is the way we have to translate. And let me tell you something else which is important. One of, uh, when I wrote the book about the Prophet ﷺ, I, I tried to, to come to something which is the essential uh, facts. And uh, a secular Muslim in Britain was saying, oh, look at this, he's not scientific, this book, because he's talking about the miracle, you know, the two angels who came and, and, and opened the heart of the Prophet Salam. And say, oh, now, look at this, it's not scientific. We have to be very careful with this kind of hegemony of what is perceived as scientific and the only way. We have to deal with the Prophet Salam by understanding that there are things that are coming from the unseen, el ghaib the invisible, and anyone who is trying to tell you uh, the only scientific way to deal with the Prophet ﷺ is to deal with facts, with no miracles, and angels doesn't exist. By the way, angels are one of the six pillars of our faith. So the fact that uh, every time you pray, every time you pray, and you say, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum, you don't say Assalamu alaikum only to the people around you, you are talking to the angels. 
So whatever is said about, and I think that this is also very important to assume and to be assertive on this. Yes, there is the invisible. And, and when you, I don't know if it happens to you, but sometimes when you enter some homes, you feel something. When nobody is there and you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, you are talking to somebody. They think there is nobody, but you feel that there is somebody and you need to remember. That's also, it's very important. In the time of consumerism and materialism, this is something, but you need to, not to start with this. You know, you have to, you talk to people and say, you know what, Islam is about angel. It's a, there are steps. You know, there is, in anything which has to do with mystics, it's, there are steps. You know what the Sufi are saying. Uh, in maqamat, it's, it, they speak first about al ahwal mawahib, wal maqamat makasib. Al maqamat means that you try to come close to Allah, this is coming out of your effort. And then at one point, Allah is taking you where you come to Him. And you know this you come to Him walking, He comes to you running. But this is very important. And I saw this with people who were converting to Islam. There are some points they don't get with their mind. But when they are starting their spiritual journey, at one point, yes, now I, I get it. There are things that you cannot get straight away. So start by being logical in the way you present Islam. Don't start with, you know, the big miracles that you think. And sometimes there are some miracles we don't agree on all the miracles because there are some that are disputed. But at least we start with the facts and then at one point you can get this. You can get the, the spiritual dimension. It's also coming and, and sometimes the people won't get this. So I think that we, you know what Ali Karram Allahu Wajha was saying, khatibun nas ala qadri uqulihim. So talk to the people at the level of their mind. So it's also your responsibility. But as I said, before talking to the people, know where you stand with your own reference. And even before even talking again to the people, listen to what they have to say. Know yourself listen to what they have to say and where they look at things and then you start this communication but from the center at the center of your own understanding not at the periphery you muslims you have nas nothing to sell just to be witnesses and that's essential for me because this is the best presentation and if you want to be uh, faithful to the Prophet ﷺ, be careful, be able to be self-critical with your own self. If somebody is looking at your own contradictions, acknowledge them. Acknowledge that sometimes you are trying your best, but you are not at the level. It's the best way to protect the level. It's the best way to protect him. Not to see people say, oh, if all the Muslims are like this. You know the story that some people were saying, uh, 